Home of the Brave by Catherine Applegate. School clothes. That night, I try on the school clothes in the box Dave has brought for me. I pick a button shirt with flowers on it and soft red pants. But Ganwar rolls his eyes. Those are pajamas, he says. You wear them when you sleep. I try again. Ganwar shakes his head. The kids will eat you alive, he says. This is bad news, since I didn't know that America people like to eat each other. Ganwar must see the fear in my eyes, because he explains. It means they'll beat you up. Oh, I say, I feel relieved. You mean like at the camp? I'm not much of a fighter, not like my brother or my, and my father and my cousin. I'm used to losing fights. It isn't so bad if you cover your face and other important places. Gunwar finds a pair of hard blue pants and a shirt the color of sand. Jeans, he says. T-shirt. I put them on and parade through the living room and through the through the TV room like a great ruler. Ganwar groans. It's just school, Keck. My aunt hushes him. Let him have his fun, she scolds. In the bathing room, I look hard in the shiny glass. I wonder if I look like an America boy. I'm not sure if that would be a good thing or a not good thing. Once there was. The next morning, I don't know what I'm feeling. I'm excited, yes, because to go to school and learn is a fine honor. But I'm also wor I'm worried also. I don't know so many things. I don't even know what, what I don't know. My belly leaps like a monkey on a tree. In the camp, we had a teacher. Some days, yes. Some days, no. Some days, I was too ill with the fever to go. Some days, the teacher couldn't come because of the men with guns. But on the good days, the teacher might arrive with a piece of chalk and maybe even a book. Mostly, he would help us learn English words so we could be ready to leave the camp someday. But sometimes, there would be, a, there would be singing or a story or numbers on our fingers and toes to count. I like the stories the best. Once there was a lion who could not roar. Once there was a man who sailed the sea. Once there was a child who found a treasure. The stories would lift me up. The words like a breeze beneath the butterfly wing, beneath butterfly wings, and take me far from the pain in my belly and the tight knot of my heart. I hope they will have stories at my school. If they don't know how, perhaps I could teach them. It isn't such a hard thing. All you must do is say, once there was, and then let your hoping find the words. New Desk Dave takes me to school. When I see it, I use the words I learned from the TV machine. No way! It's big enough to graze a herd of cattle in, made of fine red square stones surrounded by many not dead trees. Many tall, not dead trees. It's a place for a leader of men to work in, not a place for small children to learn their numbers. Dave sees my falling open mouth. Don't be scared, Keck, he says. But I'm not scared. Not like that. Scared is for men with guns, and maybe just a little for a flying boat, finding its way back to Earth. Inside my school, oh, inside my school, the floor shines like ice. I walk carefully. Thin metal doors with silver handles line the walls. Those are called lockers, Dave says. Come on, we're early, but the teacher wants to meet you. Waiting in a big windowed room is a woman with black hair that dances and sturdy arms and eyes that tell jokes. You must be Keck, she says. And then she uses my word for hello. I'm ready to begin my learning, I say. And she tosses out a loud laugh like a ball into the air. I can see you mean business, she says. A man comes in, young and short 
with skin the color of rich earth, just like mine. He says he is Mr. Franklin, and he helps sometimes in class with Miss Hernandez when Miss Hernandez needs to do her deep breathing. Everyone laughs, so I laugh too, because it's always good to be polite. This will be your desk, Mrs. Hernandez says. Have a seat. She points to a shiny chair and a little table. A chair of my own? And a table, too? I smother the thought like an ember near dry grass. I'm very sorry, but I can't, I say softly. I don't have the cattle for such a fine desk as this. Oh, she says, oh, you don't have to pay for this desk, Keck. School's free here. You just bring your, your mind and your smile every day, okay? Carefully, I sit. I like very much this new desk with its cool, smooth top. My mouth will not stop smiling. Ready. You're not going to understand a lot of what we say at first, Miss Hernandez says. This is called an ESL class. You and your classmates will be learning English together. It means they won't always understand you, and you won't always understand them. I'm not used to understanding, I say. It's like playing a game with no rules. She nods. That's exactly what it's like. I know, because when I came to the U.S. from Mexico, I couldn't speak a word of English. This is a surprise. A teacher who did not know all things? Did you not know the thing? Did you not know things also, I asked Mr. Franklin? Me? I'm from Baton Rouge, he says. It's kind of like another country. I couldn't understand these crazy northern folks for the longest time. Some of his words get lost on their way to my ears, but I can see from his face that his meaning is kind. When you have a question, Mr. Franklin and I will be here to help, says Miss Fernandez. She points to the sky. You just raise your hand like this, okay? I nod. I say, okay, just like her. I raise my hand. Yes, she says, smiling big. I ask, when will the learning begin? Cattle. In my class, my long name class called English as a Second Language, we are 16. 16 people with 12 ways of talking. When we talk at once, we sound like the, the music class I hear down the hall. Hoots and squeaks and thuds, but no songs you can sing. I look at our faces and see all the colors of the earth. Brown and pink and yellow and white and black. And yet we are all sitting at the same desks, wanting to learn the same things. Mrs. Hernandez tells everyone my name and my old home. Then she asks us to draw a picture on the, on the black wall to show where we come from. One boy, Jamie, from Guatemala, draws a mountain with a hole called a volcano. Sahar, from Afghanistan, draws a camel, though to be truthful, it looks like an old lumpy dog. I draw a bull with, a great, with great curving horns, like the finest in my father's herd. I even give him a smile, but it takes me a while to decide on his coat. In my words, we have 10 different names for the color of cattle, but the writing chalk is only white. I'm working on the tail when someone in the back of the room says, moo. Then more say it and more, and soon we are a class of cattle. At last, we can all understand each other. I think maybe some of the students are laughing at me, but I don't mind so much. To hear the cattle again is good music. Lunch. After much schooling, a, so a sound comes like a great bee buzzing. The bell means lunch, Mr. Franklin explains. He gives me a small piece of blue paper. This is for your food. Thank you very much, I say in my most polite English words, but I don't understand how the paper can help my noisy belly. 
You give the paper to the cooking people, and they will give you food, Mr. Franklin explains. Tastes much better than paper, he laughs. Well, usually anyway. The eating room is grand, with long tables and strange and wonderful smells, and many students chattering. I stand in a line, and soon kind, white-hatted people fill my plate high with food. Ahead of me, I see the snowball girl named Hannah from my building. She says, don't eat the mystery meat if you value your life. Then she points to a brown, wet pile on my plate and makes a face that says, bad taste. When my tray is heavy with gift, the gifts of food, I stand still. In, I stand still in the stream of students. I don't know where to go to enjoy my feast. Hannah waves. Follow me, she says. I'll tell you what's safe to eat. But it's all so fine, I say. She shakes her head. Kid, you got a lot to learn. Fries. We sit at one of the long tables. Nearby are two students from my class. I think this might actually be pronounced Jaime, if it's um, in Spanish. Jaime, the boy from Guatemala, and Nishan, the girl from Ethiopia. Hey, Jaime says. Hey, I say back, but I can't talk anymore because my mouth is already full of new tastes. Excuse me when I say I have swallowed at last. But what? Uh, but what is this amazing food? I hold up a brown stick. Fry, Hannah says. One of the five major food groups. This fry, it grows in your America ground, I ask. Hannah laughs. I so uh, sound like bells on a windy day. I suppose you could say that. You're keck, right? I know because I asked your cousin. Hannah passes me a paper cup filled with strange and beautiful red food. Ketchup, she says. You dip your fries in it. I do what she says, then eat. You're a fine cook, I say. Hannah and Jaime and Nishan laugh. I feel glad I found enough words to make people happy. When a friend laughs, it's always a good surprise. Not knowing. I see your cousin at the apartment sometimes, Hannah says. He's a very quiet guy. I have to think for a moment. To eat such happy food and think about words at the same time is much work. Ganwar, I say, has many worries. He seems kind of sad, Hannah says. I look at the fry in my hand with its shiny coat of red. I want only to eat and not to remember. But Hannah's words tug like a tightrope on a calf's neck. Ganwar lost his father and his sisters when the fighting came, I tell her. Hannah nods. Her eyes are blue and gray or maybe green. I can't be sure. I remember a kind doctor at the camp with such eyes. How did he lose his hand? Hannah asks in a gentle voice. I don't know the words for this. Some English words I hope I never learn. Men came with guns and knives to our village, I answer at last. To be in such fighting, says Nishan, is very bad. And what about your family, Jaime asks me. I stop eating. I take a breath. My father and my brother, Luol, they were killed by the government men. I saw it. I pause as a memory pokes at, at me like a knife in my back. I was lucky to see, I add. Lucky? Hannah asks. Her voice says she doesn't understand. Nishan looks at me with eyes that know of such things. Maybe Keck means lucky to know for sure, she explains. Not knowing is the hardest. Yes, I agree, the hardest. How about your mom, Hannah asks softly. I, guilt grabs my throat. I will not go to that black place today. I try again. She'll come, I say. I'll wait here for her. Waiting is hard too, Hannah says, 
and I can see that she also knows sad places. I push my tray away. I'm not so hungry anymore. 